Hello, and welcome to Tap That MTG, the show where we tell you everything we know about magic that's probably wrong, but fun to talk about. I'm Shauna. And I'm Leslie. And today we are excited to bring you another deep dive, this time into the Markov um, murders at Karlov Manor. Uh, I don't know where Markov came from. I'm thinking of vampires. No, murders <laughs> at Karlov Manor. There is a vampire in this deck, so that's why I'm excited about it. You see, vampires are on my mind. This deck, um, we're going to go through and tell you what this deck is meant to do, um, possibly some tweaks, how you can play it, that sort of thing. So we are just doing the things we do. Leslie is going to tell you all about this deck's commander and what it's all about. Mm -hmm. And not possibly some tweaks, definitely some tweaks. So <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> definitely, definitely some tweaks. The end. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so what is this me deck meant to do? So um, our commander does a lot of surveilling, which can potentially put things in your graveyard. And so, and it gets benefits from surveilling, which I'll read in a second. But basically, you're going to be aggressive with this deck. You're going to do a lot of looking at cards. You're going to get a lot of knowledge. You're going to put stuff in your graveyard. And hopefully, that's okay, because you're going to play stuff from your graveyard. So you have your hand that you're holding, as well as being able to use your graveyard as your hand, which is fantastic. And hopefully, you'll be able to bring things from the graveyard to the battlefield without paying their mana cost. Mm -hmm. um, so in this deck, you're definitely going to want to get your commander out early. Early because you do need to um, benefit from the commander it's a low mana cost commander so play it as soon as you can uh, so our commander is Mir Mirko um, obsess obsessive theorist another lovely gentleman with a whole <laughs> bunch of books that he's paying attention to and reading <laughs> yep. which we love uh, so for three mana he's a one three he has flying and vigilance which is already really great for your commander and whenever you surveil which is key here, you put a 1-1 one, mm -hmm. one counter on him and you're going to mm -hmm. be doing lots of surveilling. So he has the potential to get really big, really fast and get in for commander damage. Do not feel bad about hitting someone with commander damage and taking them out. That is how you win the game. You want to win the game. It's fine. <laughs> Shauna, at okay. the beginning of your end step, you may return target creature card with a power less than Mirox. uh, Mirox, because he's going to keep Mirko, getting bigger. Yeah. Mirko's, yes. Uh, from the graveyard to the battlefield <laughs> with a finality counter. So finality counter is just if you if it dies, it gets exiled instead of going to your graveyard. And that's just so you can't just keep bringing them back in this case. <laughs> can't be too overpowered. Gotta be fair. <laughs> um, but it already has built in bringing things back from your graveyard to the battlefield. Um, and 1-1 one, one counters for surveilling. So it's this is yeah. a great commander and i'm super excited for it um another option for a commander if you want is marvo deep operative he's an octopus for five <laughs> he's a one eight um when he attacks clash with defending player so what does that mean well each clashing player which is you and them reveals the top card of their library then puts that card on the top or bottom so they get to choose a player wins if their card has a higher mana value. So it's kind of like, let's do some gambling here. Let's no. see who has higher mana value. Uh, when you win a clash, you get to draw a card. Then you can cast that spell from your hand with a mana value. Or sorry, then you can cast a eight. spell from your hand with a mana value eight or less without paying its <laughs> mana cost. So you get a free oh, if you God. win the clash. And uh, we'll go over what our mana costs here are in a second, but it's okay if they're big because this would take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. So then we're gonna go into the deck breakdown. So we're gonna tell you about some of those mana costs. So the curve on this one is kind of flat except for at two. Um, so there are quite a few things that are at that higher end. So that's going to help you out there. Um, but we've got six from zero to one, 18 at two, 11 at three, four at 10, and then at five and six plus we have seven and nine. So um, lots of stuff on the high end, you know, there's like, let me see, 16, 26 thorn up. So that's half of your, not half of your, well, yeah, half of your deck. It's the bigger mana cost, but that's okay. You're going to be either bringing them back from the graveyard for free or yes. depending on what's in there. So 
The hope is that they're in your graveyard and then you cast them for free. Exactly. Exactly. So we've got um, our color breakdown. We have 11 multicolor, uh, eight colorless, 20 blue and 24 black. So pretty even that way. And of course there's the 37 lands. And then as far as the card types go, we have 30 creatures. So lots of creatures in this deck, but there's also 18 instances and sorceries that are going to help you. And you have six enchantments and nine artifacts. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty good too. And Les is going to tell you about the formula that we use to evaluate decks like this one. Yes, we have some sections we're going to go over. We feel mm -hmm. that there are five major sections that you should have in every commander deck. The first is ramp, then removal, card draw, high impact, and supporting cards. So for ramp, we think you should have 15. Removal, another 15. You should have 13 that allow you to draw cards. About 12 that are high impact game winning cards. And then 10 that can support any of those categories but can support your theme and what you want to do to win the game so our first section we're going to go over is what shauna it is the ramp and mana generators these are what help you get your stuff going here so we've got formula calls for 15 the deck has about eight um of course we've got the lovely arcane signet that comes in these decks which we is now a staple for commander um, that taps for any color in your commander's color identity. And then, of course, this is a blue-black deck, so we want the Demir Signet as well, which you can pay one and tap it for the blue and the black, which is kind of handy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Everflowing Chalice is a zero-mana cost thing, so you can just play it. But if you multi-kick it, so if you pay two into it, which you can do as many times as you want, uh, it enters the battlefield with a charge counter on it for each time it was kicked. And then you get one colorless mana for each charge counter on it. So you're not going to want to play this for free because otherwise you get zero mana. <laughs> you're going to want to decide and you can put as much mana as you want into it to give it lots more. Um, so this is actually a really good mana ramp if you play it a little bit later in the game. Mm -hmm. And there's, of course, Mind Stone that can be tapped for colorless mana. And then later on, when you need a card, you sacrifice and draw a card. <laughs> and everyone loves a soul ring. We love them in all the <laughs> decks. It's one mana cost yeah. that gets you two mana. And then a Thought Vessel, <clears throat> pardon me, Thought Vessel that is your nice little um, mana rock that gives you no maximum hand size that we'd like to have when we draw lots of cards. Mm hmm. <laughs> And you're going to want that in this deck. There's a lot of yeah. card draw. Yeah. Uh, Talisman of Dominance <clears throat> is you can tap for one colorless, but you can also add one blue or uh, black. It's just going to cost you a life to do that. But you have lots of life. You're fine. You just yeah. use your life. <laughs> then we have a creature that uh, is going to help us out. The Watcher of Hours. It's a 6-6 six, six flying uh, for six that has ward three so hard for them to get rid of they have to pay three extra to do anything to it and whenever you remove a time counter from watcher of hours while it's exiled you surveil one so it has a suspend cost on here so you're not really paying you don't want to pay the six you want to pay the suspend six so that means you put you pay two to suspend this card and you exile it with six time counters on it. And at the beginning of your upkeep, you remove one of those time counters. When the last one comes off, you can cast it without paying its mana cost. And it has haste. Really handy. Um, but it lets you surveil while it's sitting there waiting for you to play it. Mm -hmm. I think I meant to put that in the card drawing and it ended up in the, the, oh. the ramp. That's not really That's a okay. ramp card. But um, I guess not. it's also no. could be in high impact. But this card here, yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. Um, and then we're on to our card draw and tutor. So these are anything that lets you look at cards, draw cards, all of the surveil stuff could go in this category. We didn't put it all in here. So just remember like the formula calls for 13. This deck has 14, but it has way more than that because of all of the other surveil stuff that's also mm -hmm. not in here. Um, but ransom note for one it has lots of options. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you're going to surveil. Um, so I don't think we've talked about what surveil is, but basically a surveil one is oh. you look at the top card of your library and then you can choose a similar to scribe, but you can choose to put it back on the top or put it into your graveyard. So when you're surveilling and you're making that decision, you're going to think, can I or should I return this to the battlefield for free and it, then put it in your graveyard if that's the case, because your graveyard is another hand. It doesn't matter. 
-hmm. You can also pay two and sacrifice Ransom Note later uh, to cloak the top card of your library, go target creature, or draw a card. Cloaking, um, for those that you might not know yet, is basically you just put that top card of your library onto the battlefield uh, face down. It's a 2-2 two -two with ward 2, and you can flip it up anytime if it's a creature for its mana cost. Mm -hmm. A uh, Phyrexian Arena, this is a great little enchantment to have, definitely in a black deck. It's uh, for one and two black. At the beginning of your upkeep, you draw a card, you lose a life. So every, uh, basically every turn you're getting two cards. Mm -hmm. And you kind of know what it is because you've surveilled. <laughs> yeah. And it does make you be a little bit more aggressive because you are losing mm -hmm. life and there's not a lot of life gain in this. There's no life gain in this. So <laughs> Enhanced Surveillance for two is an enchantment that you can look at the top two cards of your library uh, each time you surveil, so instead of if you're surveilling two, two. You, you're surveilling one, yeah, an additional two. So whatever your surveil number is, you get an additional two that you can look at, and then you um, can exile it and shuffle your graveyard into your library. So mm. get all those things back if you want um, into your, like if you've used all of your spells that bring things back, you can put them back in. Mm-hmm. Disinf disinformation campaign this is a great enchantment for this deck for one a, a black and a blue it says when it enters the battlefield you draw a card and each opponent discards a card and whenever you surveil you get to return this to its owner's hand mm -hmm. so getting rid of their cards and getting you more cards it's awesome it's also could good, good removal for like discarding mm -hmm. cards is good removal as well definitely Mission briefing um, for two is an instant. You get to surveil two and then choose an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard and you may cast that card this turn. So if you have to cast it, you still have to pay for it. If that card would be put into your graveyard this turn, you exile it instead. So it basically gets you flashback on something that you have in your graveyard. Yeah. Uh, brainstorm for one. This is a great little instant. Um, Dig it through your deck, draw three cards, then put two cards from your hand on top of your library in any order. Mm -hmm. So letting you plan your next move. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. And perhaps you want to consider. <laughs> <laughs> so consider as one. It's an instant. You get to surveil one and draw a card. So good. Curate uh, one extra mana and you get to surveil two instead and draw a card. Otherworldly Gaze for one, look at the top three cards of your library, put any number of them into your graveyard and the rest back on top of your library in any order, so which good. is essentially Surveil. But this one also has Flashback, so you can cast it again from your graveyard. So good. Love to hate that card. Uh, deep Analysis for three and a blue. This is a sorcery that says target player draws two cards. Probably you, I would assume. Uh, it does have Flashback for only two mm -hmm. and you have to pay free life as well but who cares draw yeah. lots of cards <laughs> and notion of rain is another surveil so you surveil two and draw two cards after that and it does two damage to you as a as a re result of your benefits <laughs> dogged detective this is a two one little dude um when it enters the battlefield just surveil two and whenever an opponent draws their second card each turn you may return our little friend from your graveyard to your hand Mm -hmm. So punish them a little bit for drawing extra cards. And Baleful Strix for two is a flying death touch, but when it enters the battlefield, you get to draw a card. Mm -hmm. um, Mull Drifter, this is a great blue card. Uh, it's a 2-2 two -two flyer for five, but when it enters the battlefield, you draw two cards. However, you can play, play pay it, pay its evoked cost and play it for only three, but when you cast the spell for its evoke cost, it uh, gets sacrificed right away, but you still get those two cards. So mm. it's one that you can sacrifice and then bring out with your commander. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, yeah, get it into your graveyard and then just play yeah. it again later, right? Yeah. So then we're on to our removal section. Our formula calls for 15. The deck has about 12, which is very good. Uh, Foreboding Steamboat is our first one um, for three and two black. It's a vehicle that's a five, seven. <laughs> so 
Vehicles you do need to crew. This one has crew two on it, which means you have to tap two power among creatures you control. It could be something that has two power or it could be two things that are one ones and they add up to more power or you can tap, <coughs> sorry, tap things that have more power. So you could crew it with three. That would be fine as well. Uh, but when Forebodings T-Bone enters the battlefield, each player chooses two non-token, non-vehicle creatures they control, and they exile them until this leaves the battlefield. It is an artifact, so it's harder to get rid of. And when Forebodings T-Bone attacks, you put a card exiled with it into its owner's graveyard. And if you do, you get to investigate. So you're taking things from... Um, from their battlefield and exiling them and then potentially getting them out into their that person's graveyard getting some card draw lots of great things happening with this card as well and it's a five seven so it's it's not going to die very easily if it's a creature mm -hmm. either yeah then we have an instant called counterpoint uh three and a white and a black it says counter target spell we all know that blue likes to do that and you may cast a creature, instant sorcery, or planeswalker spell from your graveyard with mana value less than or equal to that spell's mana value without paying its mana cost. What? What? <laughs> That's such an awesome card. So, yeah. So counter cool. their big thing and and get something awesome from your graveyard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And you can pile on for four. It's an instant that has Convoke, which means that creatures can help you cast it. Each creature can tap for one colorless or the color of that creature. Um, destroy target creature or planeswalker, and you get to surveil. So you're destroying something and surveilling at the same time. Mm -hmm. Afara's Dispersal. It's a little instant for two and a blue. The spell costs two less to cast if it targets an attacking creature. Probably going to use this on when they're attacking you and you get to return target creature to its owner's hand and surveil two. So, yeah. And this spell, Price of Fame, will cost two less to cast if you target a legendary creature. It normally costs four. You're just going to destroy that creature. And again, it has surveil too. So remember what we said. It doesn't have all the card draw that you want, but it has so much surveil. Actually, no, it has all the card draw you want, plus the <laughs> additional surveil on yeah. pretty much everything. Uh, Black Sun Zenith. This is a little uh, X one that has X and two black. Put X minus one minus one counters on each creature, and then you get to shuffle this card into its owner's library. So clearing the board and counters don't go away. So you make the other stuff smaller or kill them, and um, then you get to do it again later. And Toxic Deluge is in this deck as well. <laughs> so this is going to hurt you a little bit, but that's okay. You're Demir. You like to live on the edge. Uh, <laughs> so for three mana cost, you can pay X life and all creatures get minus X, minus X until the end of turn. Just a reminder, all creatures also means your creatures. <laughs> then we have the Often Mutine Amphin. Sorry, Amphin Mutineer. It is a Salamander Pirate of all things. A three, three for four. When it enters the battlefield you exile up to one target non-salamander creature and that creature's controller creates a four three blue salamander warrior creature token so it depends what you want to do you might want to make one for yourself or more like you want to get rid of their big stompy boy or something like that and then you can play it pay its encore cost and exile it from the graveyard and uh, for each opponent you get to create a token copy that attacks that opponent this turn if able mm -hmm. So you're going to make a whole bunch of mutineers that are attacking everyone and they are uh, sacrificed at the beginning of the end step, but still get to make a mess. <laughs> and this deck has Massacre Worm in it as well. Uh, so mm -hmm. for six mana, you have a six, five worm that when it comes in, it does minus two, minus two until the end of turn to each of your opponent's creatures. And whenever in a creature an opponent controls dies, that player loses two life. So not only are they potentially losing a creature, they're losing two mm -hmm. life for each of those creatures. It's great for playing against all of those little token decks that mm -hmm. have like little one ones and two twos running around. Yeah, just drains their life. This is, it's kind of a high impact card too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Kind of. Yeah. Uh, Overseer of the Damned, it's a 5-5 five, five flyer for 7. When it enters the battlefield, you may destroy target creature. 
And whenever a non-token creature an opponent controls dies, you create a tapped 2-2 two -two zombie. So not only are they losing life from Massacre Worm, you're making zombies to kill them as well. <laughs> Zombie, zombie. <laughs> Ravenous Chupacombra for four yeah. is a two two. Mm -hmm. Love this card. It's so great. Mm -hmm. It's a little it beast be a dog. horror. It should be a dog, actually. I agree 100%. Um, but it's a Chupacabra. So when it yep. enters the battlefield, destroy target creature and opponent controls. Just straight up removal. Yep. Shriekma, three two with fear. So it can't be blocked except by artifact creatures and or black creatures. When it enters the battle, so you destroy target non-artifact, non-black creature, and it has evoke, so you can cast it for cheaper and sacrifice it as well. Mm -hmm. So cheap removal too, if you want. Yeah. And now we're on to our high impact cards. These are cards that are going to work really well with your commander or just potentially win you the game. Uh, formula calls for 12. We figure this deck has 12. Uh, so the first one is a fun little enchantment that looks like a saga, but is not a saga. Um, <laughs> so uh, it's a three mana it's a cost. It's a case. <laughs> case file. Uh, so uh -huh. at the beginning of your upkeep, you're going to surveil. So that's just done. So to solve, there are uh, there are 15 or more cards in your graveyard, then you're going to solve. If it is solved, then whenever you cast a non-legendary creature spell, you get to copy that spell. So this is another reason to uh, surveil lots. Uh, this is going to be really high impact for you in this deck because you're always putting stuff in your graveyard and you get your surveil at the beginning of your upkeep every turn, which benefits your commander as well. And so this is just, and then you get to copy all of the spells that you cast that are creature spells that are non-legendary <laughs> from now on. That's so that's great. Super, super good for this deck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then we've got our Marvo, the little octopus rogue. Um, I already talked about him. So he is definitely high impact if he's in your 99. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Watcher of hours for oh, six is. is a yeah. six, six flying ward three, three or sorry, ward three. So that mm -hmm. means it costs three extra mana to uh, target him. So when, whenever you remove a time counter from Watcher of Hours, while it's exiled, you get to surveil one. And this one has suspend. So, oh, I did put it in the high impact yeah, card. Did. So we already <laughs> talked about this we guy. About him, I just yeah. had him in the other one as well. Yeah. But yes, so this is where he should she be, likes to mess which is me. The high impact. Um, uh, <laughs> so this one has the suspend. And as Shauna said, you're just going to put counters on it. And then uh, every turn he gets one removed. But you can also <laughs> pay two. Uh, and so, yeah, he's going to be doing some work for you. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, here's a new card, a 3-2 called Unshakable Tail, a zombie detective um, for three. And when it enters the battlefield and at the beginning of your upkeep, you surveil one. And whenever one or more creature cards are put into your graveyard from your library, you get to investigate. So there you go. And you can pay two and sacrifice a clue and return our unshakable tail from the graveyard to your hand. So you're going to be doing that over and over again. So that'll help you fill your hand a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's, it's going to do a lot of work for you with the whole surveil thing. Yeah. And clues. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Some things are good in, uh, in <clears throat> some decks and not so good in others. That one's good mm -hmm. in this deck for sure. Dream Eater for six is a four three. He has flash, which means you can cast it at instant speed. He has flying, and when it enters the battlefield, you get to surveil four. When you do, you may return a target non land permanent and oper opponent controls to its owner's hand. So yeah. you're getting some removal. Um, you can do that on their combat and return the thing that's attacking you if you need to. You get a surveil out of it. Like it's just so many things, plus mm -hmm. it's a four three flyer. So good. Sphinx of the Second Sun. It's a 6 6 for 6 and 2 blue. Has flying. At the beginning of your post combat main phase, you get an additional beginning phase after this phase. Mm -hmm. So, more stuff to do. <laughs> yeah. Doom Whisperer is a nightmare demon for 5. He's a 6 6. So, he's already good because he only costs 5 and he's a 6 6. He has flying and trample. And you can pay two life to surveil. So now you can use your life to surveil whenever you want. Buff up that commander, do commander damage, and kill everybody super quick. 
Grave Titan. It's a 6-6 six, six for 6 with Death Touch. So good. And whenever it enters a battlefield or attacks, you put two zombie creature tokens onto the battlefield. It just yeah. makes a mess, for sure. Yeah. And this deck has Twilight Prophet in it. <sighs> so uh, good. Also a really great card for four. It's a 2-4. Has Flying and Ascend. So what is Ascend? Well, basically, if you have 10 permanents, which includes land or enchantments or anything that is still on the battlefield tokens. or tokens, uh, as soon as you have 10 of them, you have the City's Blessing. Um, and if you have Never. an ascend card out and then that stays for the rest of the game so at the beginning of your upkeep if you have the city's blessing you get to reveal the top card of your library put it into your hand um so that's untap upkeep put that into your hand and then you get to draw after that so you get two uh -huh. cards um and each opponent loses X life and you gain X life where X is the mana value of that. So remember mm -hmm. our mana, mana curve and the big mm -hmm. mana cost mm -hmm. stuff also benefits you with this card. So, yeah. So good sure. in this deck. Draining their life. So uh, good always, with, but. Yeah. Sir Conrad. Um, this is another one that is really even more powerful with the surveil thing. So five, four for five. Whenever another creature dies or a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield, so what the surveil, um, or a creature card leaves your graveyard, so it comes back out from your commander, Yes, this dude is going to deal one damage to each opponent. So good. So the whole deck that you're doing, Sir Conrad is out, you are doing a ton of damage with him. Yeah. Plus you can pay a one and a black and make players mill a card including you but you don't care because you got ways to do that so yeah, yeah it's he's so good in this deck insane yeah. so good whispering snitch for two uh he's a one three and whenever you surveil for the <laughs> first time each turn whispering snitch deals one damage to each opponent and you gain one life so again in this deck gonna it's game. gonna because you're doing so much surveilling it's gonna be <laughs> super high impact yeah um, Demir Spybug, this is a great little card, a 1-1 flyer for two and has Menace, but whenever you surveil, you get to put a counter on him, so he's just as good as your commander almost. Yeah, yeah. So good. So good. <laughs> we keep saying so good, because this deck so is good. so good. Uh, so support, <sighs> these are cards that are going to help you win the game or support your other win cons. Formula, we think, should have 10. This deck, again, is very theme heavy with all the surveilling, and so we think it has about 17. Our first one is Animate Dead, which will help you get things out of the graveyard. Uh, so Enchanted Creature, or Enchant Creature card in a graveyard. When Animate Dead enters the battlefield, if it's on the battlefield, it loses Enchant Creature card in the graveyard and mm -hmm. gains Enchant Creature card put is put onto the battlefield with Animate Dead. <laughs> Return Enchanted <laughs> Creature card to the battlefield under your control and attach an Animated Dead to it. When Animated Dead leaves the battlefield, that creature's controller sacrifices it. Enchanted Creature gets plus one, plus zero. Long story five. short, <laughs> you're going to enchant something in your battlefield, in your graveyard, and bring it back. It gets minus one, minus zero. <laughs> I don't know yeah. why they needed all those words yeah, to say blah, that. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a tough one. Uh, yeah. And then necromancy. This is a weird looking card. <laughs> Another an word card. Yes, yeah, so it says you may choose to play it as an instant. And if you do, you bury it at the end of turn. And I believe bury is the old way of saying exile it yeah. at the end of turn. When you play Necromancy, you choose target creature card in any graveyard. When it comes into play, put that creature into play as though it were just played, and Necromancy becomes a creature enchantment that targets the creature. If it leaves play, bury the creature. So you have to exile the creature. So I'm, Again, mm -hmm. it's just you're just using it to bring something back from the graveyard. Yeah. A lot of words to so say weird. enchant something from a graveyard, it's now yours, and it has summoning <laughs> sickness. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Rise of the Dark Realms for nine. Put mm -hmm. all creatures, cards from all graveyards onto the battlefield under your control. <coughs> what? <laughs> this is a very high impact card. The only reason that we put it into support is because you could have no creatures in your graveyard yet when it's in your mm -hmm. hand. And so it's just sitting there. Um, they may not have any good creatures in there 
graveyard. So it is a little bit conditional and you have to play it at the right time. But if you play it at the right time, it is going to be really high impact for you. Because your commander, when it brings back those cards from the graveyard, you have to exile it if it dies. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you might not have anything left if you're using your commander properly, but you should have won the game by then. Yeah. <laughs> um, Discovery Dispersal. This is a great little card from uh, Ravnica that I used to play when I played the Demir Surveilling kind of deck. Um, it's got Discovery on one side and Dispersal on the other, so you have to choose which one you want to play. Discovery is a sorcery that says surveil two, then draw a card. Or dispersal for three in the blue and the black. Each opponent returns a non-land permanent in the control with the highest converted mana cost among permanents they control to its owner's hand, then discards a card. So it's especially useful when they don't have any cards in hand and you're going to return something awesome from their uh, battlefield and then they have to discard it. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Yeah. And reanimate for one in a sorcery. <laughs> Put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. You lose life equal to its mana value. Bring it back. So, yeah, uh, that's okay. You got you got life gain a little tiny bit. It'll be fine. Yep. Charnel, Serenade, uh, four and two black, a sorcery that says surveil three, then return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield with the finality counter on it. Um, that's the where it when it dies it gets exiled and then you have to exile a Chanel serenade with three time counters on it and um, yeah so that that's one way to do it or you can suspend for three so you pay three and exile it with three time counters on it and then you get to pay only three when it actually gets to come out no you can't guess without paying its mana cost Another uh, card where we have to make a choice is Connive and Concoct. Concoct. Yeah. Uh, so gain control of target creature with power two or less, or you can surveil three and then return a card from your graveyard to the battlefield. My recommendation is to use it to return a card. Mm -hmm. But there might be something you want to steal. Yeah. Copy catchers. This is a nice little fairy that Leslie likes. A two one flyer. Whenever you surveil, you may pay two, and if you do, you create a token that's a copy of copy catchers. Mm -hmm. So that could be fun. You could have a lot yeah. of extra mana. You could dump into making lots of little fairies everywhere. Yep, that'd be fun. <laughs> uh, Final word, Phantom, for three is a 1-4. It has flash, so again, instant speed, flying, and during each opponent's end step, you may cast spells as though they had flash. So now so good. while they're doing their end step, it's fine. You can just cast everything you need to cast that you have extra mana left open for so that they think you have counter spells. Blue should leave their mana up. <laughs> yep. Yep. I like the art on this. Mm -hmm. the... One more thing. One more thing. One more thing. Um, I have Dusk Mantle of 3-8 for 7. It is an eye creature that is flying and lifelink. <laughs> And you may play land, play lands and cast spells from among cards in your graveyard. You've surveilled this turn. If you cast a spell this way, you pay life equal to its mana value rather than paying its mana cost. If it's a land, though, that doesn't do anything to you. So it's a good way to get some ramp happening for you there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Phyrexian Metamorph, um, it's a good card. I don't know how beneficial it is to this deck other than it's a good card, but three and a Phyrexian mana, which means you can pay two life instead of blue, but normally it would be blue and three. Uh, you can have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any artifact or creature on the battlefield, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. A reminder that the legendary rule still does apply, so you cannot copy legend. Well, you can copy legendary creatures, but then one of them would disappear. Mm -hmm. Um, Vizier of Many Faces, similar idea. You're, it may enter as a copy of any creature on the battlefield. Um, what's nice about it is it has the embalm cost on it. So you could play it again, or if it's in your graveyard, you can pay it, pay its embalm cost and have it come back. Um, but as when it comes back from, as a 4-4 four, four zombie, yeah. yeah. Mm. Lazav, the multi for mm -hmm. two is a one three. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you surveil one, which is great. And you can pay X and Lazav, the multi becomes a copy of target 
creature card in your graveyard, which is very beneficial when you have all the stuff in your graveyard, is mm -hmm. convert a mana cost uh, with converted mana cost X. So you have to kind of like pay for it, uh, except its name is the same as its original name and its legendary in addition to its other types and has this ability. So the uh, other creature would then also be able to do that ability. Yeah. You can make it be whatever you need at the time. Yeah. Uh, Master of Death, this is a 3-1 little dude. When he enters the battlefield, you surveil two. At the beginning of your upkeep, if this guy is in your graveyard, you may pay one life. And if you do, you return it to your hand. Yep. Regen. Night Veil, yeah, exactly. Night Veil Sprite for two. It's a one-two with flying, and when it attacks, you get to surveil. Mm -hmm. So good. Thoughtbound Phantasm, a defender. Whenever you surveil, you put a one-one counter on this guy, though, and as long as it has three or more one-one -one counters on it, it can attack. Five-five <laughs> uh, five all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> and the last one in this category is Sinister Starfish. For two, it's a zero three, but you can tap it and surveil one at any time. So it just keeps getting you that surveil, which is actually yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, so this deck has the 37 lands that they all have had, which is good because you can use those spots for doing some little tweaks to these decks. And since you stuck around with us this long, we're going to show you some tweaks. We're going to reward you for doing that. <laughs> so we've got... Uh, one of the ones uh, that we have in here is Confession Dial. Um, for three, it's a little artifact that says when it enters the battlefield, you survey three, which is really good. And you can tap it and a target legendary creature card in your graveyard gains escape until end of turn. So the escape cost is equal to its mana cost, plus exile three other cards from your graveyard. Mm -hmm. So that's another way to get stuff back from your graveyard is with that escaping instead. Yes, and another kind of card draw option is Cryptex. Um, this is also a new one. I put it mm -hmm. in here because it is kind of like a fun looking card mm -hmm. for two. You can tap it and collect evidence. Um, evidence three. So you add one mana of any color, put an unlock counter on Cryptex, and then you can sacrifice it to surveil three. So it supports the surveil and then draw three cards. Activate only if Cryptex has five or more unlock counters. So you just keep building it up by adding mana of any color. So it's good ramp as well as then in the end, you can surveil three and draw three. Cool. Mm -hmm. Um... All right, so eat, from ex eat to extinction, not from extinction. Uh, for three and a black, this is a great instant that says exile target creature or planeswalker, and you get to look at the top card of your library, and you may put it into your graveyard. So the whole surveil thing with a removal card is nice. Yeah. And starving revenant for four is a four four. When it enters the battlefield, you get to surveil two. Then each card put on top of your library. So if you decide not to put them in your graveyard, you draw a card and lose three life. So you're just gonna get those cards if you want them. It has to send eight, which means that whenever you draw a card, if there are eight or more permanent cards in your graveyard, which is probably gonna happen, target opponent mm -hmm. loses one life and you gain one life. So again, there's a few things that are like, you're gaining one life just by playing stuff from your graveyard and they're losing life, which will help you pay the life for all of these things that you're mm -hmm. going to be doing. Yeah. Yeah. And then a new land that came out that should be, you should put in this if you have it. Uh, Under City Sewers, it's a island swamp. Um, it does enter the battlefield tapped, but when it enters the battlefield, you get to surveil. So that's a good little one. If you happen to get it, use that in this deck. Mm hmm so then we felt um, as we were looking, there is definitely some return things from your graveyard to the battlefield, but you want to definitely be able to do that. And we wanted to make sure that there was more. So we would recommend putting at least a couple extra return to battlefield. So we have a whole bunch of options for you. Uh, mm -hmm. You can choose what is best, but the first one is Altar of Bahal. The first uh, portion, the adventure portion, doesn't really help you with this deck. It's three mana. You can create a 4-1 black skeleton creature token with menace. It's fine. But if you choose to pay it, pay the uh, artifact side of it, then your artifact allows you to 
pay three, tap it, exile a creature you control, and return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Um, you can activate that as a sorcery. So basically you're trading things, putting something else in your graveyard to bring something better back. Yeah. Exile that little skeleton after you use it, and then where you go. Exactly. Bring yeah. that back. Agadim's Awakening. This is a great little sorcery that could also be a land on the other side. Depends what you need. Um, but as a sorcery, you return from your gra return from your graveyard to the battlefield any number of target creature cards that each have a different converted mana cost X or less. So again, you're going to pay what you can into it. Or if you use the land side, when it enters the battlefield, you may pay three life. Um, if you don't, it enters tapped. So it depends what you need. It's kind of handy. Mm-hmm. Anything that does more than one thing, right? Yeah. Arch Priest of Shadows is a five mana cost four four. It has backup. So when this creature enters the battlefield, you get to put a one one counter on the target creature. Um, back someone up. If that's another creature, it gains the following abilities until the end of turn. So basically, um, you just get to copy abilities. This also has Death Touch. And whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player um, or battle... Uh, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So those mm -hmm. are the keywords there. Return target creature from the graveyard to the battlefield. It has death touch, so they're probably not going to want to block it, but um, they're also going to want to block it to keep you from getting <laughs> something back. Yeah. Makes it hard. Yeah. Black Sun's Twilight. This is a great little instant for X and a black that says up to one target creature gets minus X, minus X till end of turn. If X is five or more, return a creature card with mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Mm -hmm. Ever after, great card for this as an option. It has six mana. Return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Each of those creatures is a black zombie in addition to its other types. And then you put ever after on the bottom. So it does cost six, but you get two um, creatures. Mm -hmm. So it's really only three for each creature. And it doesn't have any stipulations as to what those yeah. creatures' power and toughness need to be. So that's a... Solid work there. Yeah, it doesn't say that they have to be exiled or anything. Like no. it's just so no good. finality counters. Yeah, yeah. Finale of Eternity. This is a great card too for X and two black a sorcery that says destroy up to three target creatures with toughness X or less. If X is ten or more, you return all creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Great way to dump your mana and get everything yeah. back. Get everything back. <laughs> Yeah. Liliana Death Wielder. Oh, we love the Lilianas, but this one is so good for this deck. So uh, for seven, she's a five loyalty planeswalker. Um, so first of all, you can pump her up plus two plus two and put a minus one minus one counter on up to one target creature. Um, you can minus three to destroy a target creature with a minus one minus one counter on it. So she's mm -hmm. removal, but her minus ten is... Um, is return all creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. So get everything Ooh. back all at once. I would recommend just kind of playing her and passing the turn and not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if someone God. wants to read her, that's fine. But you don't have to tell them <laughs> if they don't anything. want to look. <laughs> don't oh, say anything. <laughs> uh, Shieldred Whispering One. This is a 6-6 six, six crazy praetor for seven has swamp walk so it can't be blocked as long as defending player controls a swamp um at the beginning of your upkeep return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield and at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep that player sacrifices a creature this is just such a mean mean card so good so good for this deck like just every upkeep you get to return creature from your graveyard yeah. and it's not even three or less or anything like it's just mm -mm. And the last tweak that we thought for returning things from the graveyard was the Cauldron of Eternity. Now it does cost a lot. It's 10 and 2, but it costs 2 less to cast for each creature card in your graveyard. So you're going to be able to get it out fairly easily. Whenever a creature you control dies, you put it on the bottom of its owner's library. So now they don't have to go in your graveyard unless you choose to surveil them into your graveyard. And you can pay two and a black and tap it and pay two life to return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So all the options um, for this <laughs> to get things where you want them. Yeah. Yeah. Craziness. All right. Well, that brings us to the end. Thanks for watching. Um, feel free to connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, or X, or whatever it's called now. 
um, and Instagram. We'd love to hear how you would tweak this deck. Are you excited about playing this one? And that's it for this time. We will see you next time. And in the meantime, tap those magic cards and have fun doing it. Bye, Bye guys. Everyone.